Hello, I'm Gary Chartier from the Center for a Stateless Society. Welcome to ATP 101, an introduction to anarchism. As you probably know, this course is the first in a sequence of courses designed to equip you to receive the C4SS Foundational Certificate in Anarchist Theory and Practice. The goal of this course is to introduce you to anarchism, as the title suggests. Now, we've selected as the text for this course Morris and Linda Tannehill's The Market for Liberty, but the point of the course is to introduce you to anarchism, not exclusively or primarily to the variety of anarchism laid out by the Tannehills. Um, first of all, just a little bit about the Tannehills, not because they're the only anarchists who count, not because they're the only uh, people we're going to talk about in this class, but because they do provide the text that uh, we're going to be focusing on. Um, this book was one of the very first attempts to talk about the way in which a stateless society might actually work. It uh, was the successor to a much shorter 16-page uh, pamphlet called Liberty on the Market. Um, unlike a lot of other people who, who were present at the foundation of modern market anarchism, uh, the Tannehills are folks about whom we have surprisingly little extant information. So according to uh, Brian Doherty in Radicals for Capitalism, the Tannehills were, quote, a pair who dropped out of the libertarian movement and then dropped out of society. Now, according to a uh, uh, feature in Liberty Magazine, uh, libertarianism was only one stop in the ideological odyssey of the Tannehills, who earlier were associated in chronological order with the Minutemen the American Nazi Party, and the Foundation for Economic Education, and subsequently managed a uh, psychotherapeutic cult. These were folks who had a lot on their agenda. Uh, Linda Tannehill, according to the Peace and Liberty, later took back her maiden name of Linda Locke and worked as a sandal maker in New Mexico. So definitely a lot going on in uh, the lives of these folks. Um, I'm certainly not a believer that the uh, personal idiosyncrasies or ideological or personal failings of somebody provide uh, any reason not to take that person's ideas seriously. And while this is not, I repeat, a course in the Tannehills, uh, but a course in anarchism, uh, I think we've got a lot to learn from the Tannehills even where we disagree with them. Now, the Tannehills were, and I have no reason to think Linda isn't still, libertarian. The word libertaire was originally used to refer to anarchists in 19th century France, and it's still got a generally anti-authoritarian flavor, but it is fair to say that some anarchists don't like the word libertarian. Uh, we could talk more about why that is, but the reality is that uh, uh, for some anarchists, uh, the word libertarian seems to be associated with what my friend uh, Kevin Carson calls vulgar libertarianism, namely an approach that treats uh, the rhetoric of freedom uh, as an excuse to uh, justify the abuses of what's really uh, a very unfree market with a lot of uh, crony partnerships between business and government. Uh, now this is not a course about parsing terms. It's a course about the theory and practice of freedom. For some reason, the word libertarian leaves a bad taste in your mouth, that's fine. Uh, I can certainly understand why that would be the case. We'll be concerned with different schools of anarchism throughout the certificate program. Uh, this particular book, the book by the Tannehills, provides one way into a more general conversation. It's important to remember that general conversation. Uh, this is not a course designed, this is not a certificate program designed to indoctrinate you into Tannehill-style anarchism. Rather, it is a program simply designed to give you a feel for what anarchism looks like theoretically and practically. Not surprisingly, there is an enormous variety uh, within uh, the modern anarchist movement. Now, what do I mean by anarchism? Anarchism, I define as the project of doing without the state. Okay? Uh, that means both the claim that the state is worth doing without because it's not fundamentally legitimate. The authority the state claims is fundamentally not 
uh, really there. I have no particular obligation to do anything the state tells me to do. It also means that, practically speaking, we can do a better job without the state. And that brings us to what I call the positive vis vision of anarchism, which is a vision of peaceful cooperation. Anarchism is about what happens when people work together peacefully, cooperatively, to solve common problems without guns being pointed at anyone's head. Anarchism isn't about throwing bombs and breaking windows. It's about giving people the freedom to craft creative solutions to their own problems. The state is organized around the exercise of monopoly of force, a monopoly over the right to determine who's got what legal rights. By contrast, a stateless society is a society in which people are in principle free to try anything that's peaceful. Now, there are lots of ways in which you can organize peaceful cooperation. I think it's important to emphasize that because the Center for a Stateless Society is explicitly and I think rightly committed to market anarchism. That is to say, to a variety of anarchism that takes the uh, uh, right of people to freely exchange goods and services very seriously, that takes property rights seriously. But it's important to emphasize that there's not just one way in which uh, we can organize a stateless society and commercial relationships, re relationships in which people exchange goods and services for money, uh, certainly aren't the only kinds of relationships that could or should exist in a peaceful, cooperative, stateless society. They're very useful, they're important, they make a difference, but they're not the only option. So there's paid work, either in for-profit or not-for-profit organizations, but there's also volunteer work, there's work in the informal sector, and there is self-help. All of these things matter. All of them would form a part of the social infrastructure of a functional stateless society. To talk about market anarchism is really just to talk about the freedom of people to craft their own strategies for social interaction, for social cooperation, for problem solving together. At C4SS, we use market as an umbrella term for the whole arena of voluntary cooperation. It's not just about commercial exchange, and that's worth emphasizing. So again, we're using this book, The Market for Liberty, which focuses on market anarchism, not because it's perfect, but because it's a useful conversation starter and is readily available. You can question and you can challenge the Tannehills, and of course me, as much as you like. We're not reading a sacred text, we are exploring one illustrative proposal. And your goal, especially in a course about anarchism, is not to submit to the authority of the author or to the authority of the instructor. Your goal is to think critically and reflectively, to push your own intellectual horizons, to ask the authors difficult questions, to ask me difficult questions, to ask yourself difficult questions. Together, we're going to have an exciting conversation about issues that matter, and the only way we can have that kind of conversation is if your thinking cap is on and you're unwilling to accept anything at face value.